Hello? Hello. This is a call from... Jeremy Nez. An inmate at Pinellas County Jail. You are receiving a call from the Pinellas County Jail that is subject to monitoring and recording. To accept these terms and complete this call, press 1 after the tone. Hello? Hey, what's up? What's going on? Nothing. What are you doing? Sitting down at NHS right now, down in Santa Cruz. Yeah? Just have some coffee. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now, I'm drinking some coffee. How's it been going in there with, like, the people? Yeah, pretty good. I ain't got no issues in there. How long have you been in there since you got locked up? 13 months. Damn, for real? Well, at least you're about to be out. Yeah. And I'm going to be in Florida, like, two weeks after you get out, so I'm going to get to see you. I can't wait to hang out with you. I know. It's been a while. I want to skate when you come in town. I don't really want to skate. The skate park will be packed. Like, I want to go to, like, the Pro Bowl or something like that. Man, we can go wherever you want. You have one uh, minute remaining. Okay, the time's up for the, like 15 minutes. All right. All right I love you. I love you too, Dad. Stay and safe uh, in there. Stay out of trouble in there. You got to get out. No, I'm always safe. Always. All right, I know. Always. All right, bye, Jeremy. Later. Florida is situated in the south of the United States. It is a peninsula surrounded by water. In it are palm trees and brilliant flowers. Most people think of Florida as a vacation land. It is. In the winter, people from Ohio and Kansas, from New York and Maine, from every state, including California, travel to Florida. Here, surrounded by the luxuriant plant and animal life of the tropics, they fish and swim and lie in the sun. Welcome to Tampa. Let's go. house of the fence. One time I snuck out of the skate park. I just went next door to get some Chinese food, but I wasn't supposed to leave the skate park. My parents happened to show up there at that time. As the punishment, my dad made me paint this whole fence green, but I had to paint it all, but with like a little hand brush. Like that was my punishment. This is where I started skating. We lived in this house, moved in when I was probably like five. And then when I was like nine, I was just going through the garage one day, like. I remember just finding my dad's skateboard. I remember just taking it outside, like kind of going down the driveway. That's kind of where it all started, right there. I was first born, my parents weren't doing too good with money. I think my mom worked at Publix, and my dad, he, my grandfather, my, my mom's father, he started doing carpentry work in 1992 when I was born. Got really good at it, started a business, and then showed my dad how to do it. Ended up starting his own business. From the time I was like four to about 12 is when my parents started getting better with money. My mom became a dancer. Well, we call it a dancer, but a stripper. So when I would be like six, seven, I would love waking up in the morning and like my mom would be home from work, probably sleeping, and she'd just have all this money. And I used to love just counting her money. And she would let me count her money. Like that was just like a thing. Like she knew I enjoyed doing it. So I'd just be counting like thousands of dollars when I was like six, seven years old. And it just was like normal to me. By the time I was like 10, they had owned, they owned a, a boat. We had dirt bikes, all this shit. They had built me a mini ramp in our backyard in that house. 
I had anything I ever wanted as a kid. Like, other kids in the neighborhood would call me spoiled, you know? At this time, my mom was flying back and forth to Las Vegas because she could make $500 a night in Tampa or make like 1200 to 1500 a night in Vegas. So it was a no-brainer. Like, she'll fly out there for two weeks, work every night, come back home, chill for like a week, go back out there. But um, fast money comes and fast money goes. My mom being in this nighttime lifestyle, both my parents liking the party, turned into a, a drug addiction. It started with one drug and seeing like the partying and like, damn, my parents are sleeping all day, like to being in Vegas and like, just being in the car with my dad sometimes while he's like handling shit. Probably a lot of times I shouldn't have been in the car being that I'm a, I was a kid, but to me, the shit I saw, it became more normal. It got to a point where it was like me, my mom and dad, and it was just us out there. So it was like, we all got to eat. Like, if my dad needs help with something, I'm gonna help him. Like, that's my best friend. Like, that's what I looked up to, you know? Yeah, it just got worse in Vegas, though. Well, we owned our, we owned our house that he grew up in, and then we um, sold it to move to Vegas, and everything went downhill quickly there because there's just too many drugs out there and stuff. Remember one time, thinking the cops were coming to the house. Like I was in my room, but they had been like my mom, parents had been fighting and shit, and they thought that like the cops were banging on the door. And I don't really remember too much if there was people banging on the door or if it was like them just worrying about it and also being like high off some things. I just remember my dad running out of his room with a bag full of some white shit <laughs> like this big and running into my bathroom and just like dumping it into my toilet but then realized there was no cops and it was just like thousands of dollars just down the toilet. It was a wild lifestyle. A lot of nights of me like trying to go to bed for school from the drugs and shit. My parents just like staying up all night, either fighting or going through shit in the house. My mom fucking vacuumed me in the house till like four in the morning. It was always like, just, it's only gonna take five more minutes. It's only gonna take five more minutes, but it's fucking been 45 minutes, you know? Even through all that, the drugs and everything my whole life, having money, not having any money. My parents were always 100% supportive of me skateboarding. He was actually a really great kid. He barely ever got in trouble. What I did at first was when he was little, we did like softball, we did every, every sport out there, trying to figure out what his niche was. As a little kid, I like hated that I had someone tell me what to do as like a coach, and also hated that I had to wear this uniform like all these other kids. At the time I was doing karate, loved Taekwondo and karate. Master Lee? Yeah. Hey. Oh. Jeremy Nibs. Oh, Jeremy! Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, nice to see you. I'm not famous, no. <laughs> but yeah, I used to be kicking these bags in here, running laps and laps around this thing in a little karate uniform, nunchucks. That's so cool he's here. So you are this professional skateboarder? Um, close. Close? Yeah, hopefully soon. But I mean, I, I travel I travel the world right now for it. And that's my job, and get, get paid to do it. Pretty <laughs> nice. Yeah. Did you finish Black Belt? Yeah, I got uh, the one with the stripe, yeah. Black Belt? Yep. Not here, right? You are the way later. Uh, I don't know what year it was. You made a Black Belt. Hopefully you are here. Oh, right there. Front row, right Jeremy Nibs. Yeah, that was me right there. 1999, right? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, that's oh, me. Here. But we did, you know, pen printing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <Why did you? laughs> I guess when I got my black belt, we didn't do the printing. 
the fist print and the hand print on the uh, paper saying that I got it. So we're going to do it now. <laughs> the Taekwondo I know helped him a lot because he has it taught him to be patient and resilient and treat people with respect and not be like overly all about yourself, being modest. And that's how he is. And then he, has, he starts skateboarding. My dad skated when he was like a teenager, when I was little, he still had his old skateboard. I remember like once I had stood on it and started like kind of riding it around, I just didn't want to do anything else. I saw um, skateboard summer camps at that time would work till five in the morning. So it was perfect for, I was like, okay, that's where he's going to spend his days during the summer. At the time it was called Central Skate Park. It was in Clearwater, Florida. So this is the first skate park I ever came to. It's not a skate park anymore, but it used to be called Central Skate Park. It had a little kitty course with a like, small four foot mini ramp. Then it had a big like six foot mini ramp with extensions. They had a big 11 stair. And I remember I ollied it when I was super young, like fully padded, like helmet, wrist guards, knee pads. You had to wear helmets, had to wear pads. So when he first went to Tampa, he was wearing hat and pads, and they would, they would clown on him when they, he would win the contest and stuff like that. Oh yeah, Kinda that's what stuff. we started with, yeah. yeah. Vert. I think I've known Jeremy for since he was like a little kid, like 10-ish or something, I don't know. What I first remember is, uh, you know, just like too big of clothes and pads and front side airs grabbing between the legs, think bug. You know, that's what you're, that's like little kid stuff, but he could ride ramps. A lot of kids were just like strictly trying to skate street and for him he had, he was like an ATV and I always appreciate that kind of skating. And, and then we um, moved to Vegas. It was all concrete so he learned how to like skate concrete and everything like that. He was more on his own when we lived out there because we were partying and stuff like that. But he still, we still got him, even though no matter wh how messed up we got, we still got him to the skate park. And he learned a lot out there. But he also, you know, learned that you can be really well, well set to having nothing like that with a blank. We lived in Vegas for about a year, year and a half. <clears throat> in that year and a half, lost everything. But I'm saying like a couple hundred thousand dollars, like gone, like lost everything. All we had was our Tahoe. By the time we left Vegas and moved back to Florida, we were like sleeping on my friend's floor. We decided to move back when it was getting bad. And then when we came back, we had already sold everything off. So we had to go live with family and stuff like that from like me being a kid, like, damn, we got this sick ass like lifestyle. Like I want a PlayStation. Like my parents will go get me the PlayStation. Even down to like, just always having food to like within a year and a half, not even having like a roof over our head, like getting evicted from place after place, pretty much living off like almond noodles and shit like that. This house right here, my aunt Tina lived here when we first moved back from Las Vegas, and she let us come stay with her. But they had this back little sunroom right here that you can see. Me, my mom, and dad slept in there. They had their bed. I think I had an air mattress, but we just slept beds right next to each other. After like six months of staying there, we moved into this house, which was my dad's like best friend at the time, Jeremy's house. The house looks way nicer than when I lived in it. <laughs> we moved in and out of this house a couple times. My dad's family lived here. It was my grandmother, 
my grandfather, and my great-grandmother, my nana. They let me have a bedroom here, which was nice because it had been probably like two years since I had like my own bedroom. Yeah, so this house right here looks completely different now. My grandfather had lived in it pretty much my whole life. I would come over here a lot to kind of get away from everything and also to eat dinner. I was eating good when I came over here. And then his father kept using, even though we didn't know he was using, and everything just kind of went down. In Vegas, they were very much on some like speedy, uppy type drugs, you know, like stay up all the time. Yeah, when we got back to Florida, if you, if you look up shit about Florida and pharmaceuticals, you'll see that it's a huge problem in Florida. Dude, there's a spoon, a needle. No way. Oh, wait, that's a heroin kit? Ugh. Is there any loot? I doubt it. As long as you had the money to pay for that, that visit to the doctor, that like 150, 200 bucks, that's all they cared about. They're just, like, they just write scripts out here. Both my parents have always had back problems from like car accidents, so it was super easy for them to go to the doctor, get this prescription. So like 11th, 12th grade is when it formed like a, a pill problem in my family. And that shit sucked. So many times, like, I thought my parents were, like, ODing, and I'm, like, staying up all night just to make sure, like, like, trying to wake them up, trying to, like, just make sure that they don't, nothing happens, like, what I'm thinking might happen. Because yeah. I've definitely, like, gotten phone calls and had to rush to the hospital because, like, one of my parents was ODing. I'll never forget being in that hospital room, staring at my mom, and she's just, like, out on like machines and shit, and then she just wakes up like, what the fuck happened, da 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 You wanna be like angry at them, but at the same time, you're like happy they didn't die. And it's such a crazy like feeling mm -hmm. and like emotion to deal with. It went from my parents taking care of me to like, we're taking care of each other. Like they're taking care of me like, cause they're the ones working, but I'm like, have this whole other mentality where like, I'm looking out for them, like clean up their messes as they're going along, you know? Mm -hmm. My mom's been a lot better about it. I got her smoking weed, which has helped her to like, not take a lot of the things she was taking. Really proud of her. With my dad, it's like, sometimes he's good. Sometimes he's back on his bullshit. And there's nothing I can do to stop it. When we talked to him in Santa Cruz, he was still in, still in jail. He ended up getting out. Talked to him a couple of times since he got out. I had to fly back to Florida early for a funeral. I've been back here for about a week and I haven't seen him yet. Like two days after my dad, my dad got out of jail this last time, he overdosed. So my dad took, bought, got some pills off somebody, took what he would normally take of this one drug, not knowing that there's fentanyl in that pill. Had to get rushed to the hospital. Heart stopped beating for a couple minutes, was like literally dead for a couple minutes. They had to bring him back to life. And that was the same day that my great grandmother passed away. She passed away like two hours after that happened. That's good for now? <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. So I'm gonna fuck around and start crying if we keep talking. <laughs> Those type of situations, I think, definitely had me like grow up younger. Being in situations where like my parents were supposed to pick me up from the skate park and they just don't show up, and then I got to figure out like, all right, where am I gonna go sleep at now? Like, I don't have a cell phone. How am I gonna figure this out? Or even like them being like so knocked out on some shit where they're sleeping for like two days, and I gotta like figure out how to make food in the house as like a little kid, you know? I'm in there hitting him with pillows, like, wake up, come on, and it's just nothing. Yeah, I mean, he never, he never wore it on his shoulder. You know, he never, he never let anyone else kind of see what was going on in his life, but there would be points in his life where, where things at home would be difficult, whether, you know, whoever it may be, but 
at a young age, he was forced to grow up quickly. You know, I was, you know, I've, I've been there, you know, many times where Jeremy is, is, is racing somewhere to pay someone in his family's bill for some reason because it's going to be late today. And he's the guy to get that done for his family, even though he's the youngest in his family. Being on a trip and having to be concerned about his dad and taking collect calls and is he going to be in jail again and then mom issues with mental health. You know, he's like that rock that they kind of rely on. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot for a kid to take on and he always played that role really well. Mm -hmm. Jeremy is one of the most polite and considerate and nicest people that you could ever, like genuinely nice. Love you. Love you too. Love Bye. <laughs> See, he had all the cards stacked against him, too. Like, he should be, like, maybe in prison, like his cousin. You know, like, he maybe should have been in trouble, but he never, ever, ever went down that path. I don't even think he, like, dabbled in that path. Like, I don't ever remember me thinking, like, oh, we need to redirect Jeremy. All right. Love you, too. Bye. We will. Yeah, it's super, super easy to do the wrong thing in Florida. When me and my family went broke, like, <clears throat> me and my dad would do the wrong thing together. So me and my dad and my mom could eat. And it wasn't until, like, I really got in trouble, reality really hit. I was accused of breaking into a car in Ybor City and stealing stuff out of the car. I got a phone call letting me know, and I looked up my charges and said I had a warrant, but I ended up just turning myself in. I only spent like maybe 40 hours in jail, but that night going to Orient Road Jail and getting put in the handcuffs and turning around and like seeing my mom just crying as I was like getting brought to this jail cell, that shit like really put things into perspective for me. I've had fears when he tells me, oh, I did this or that, and I'm like, no, 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 don't be doing that because it's going to lead to this. I'm waiting at the bus stop in Ybor City, getting ready to go to skate park in Tampa and get a phone call from Ryan. He's like, hey, got this really weird opportunity. Can't really tell you too much about it right now. If you want to do it, we have to get on a flight tomorrow morning at like 6.30 in the morning, and we fly to Alabama. That whole week leading up to that Friday, me and three, two of my friends were, had been plotting and figuring out how to make this thing work that we were gonna do. On that Saturday, we had planned to do it. Good times, good times. See, that was my, that's my best friend. I know all the shit he was gonna do because we were gonna do it together. I was ready to go get it with him. <laughs> like, we both would've blew it. We both, we both probably be in jail right now, honestly. If he didn't call me that day, I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. I've never told Clements that story. Maybe I was too scared to tell him, like, yo, I almost fucked my life up. Specifics, but he had something kind of planned for him and his buddies were going to do something to get some quick money. Oh, wow. And that's when you hit him up, hey, do you want to go to Alabama? Like, really? To do the little Wayne thing, and he, like, kind of canceled going to do this other thing to go no way and wow just, yeah. sure glad that that doesn't that didn't work out yeah that he didn't even go that route wow it's not his character you know so that would be that would be kind of crazy out of his character like that to like have to be like that i look at it like he saved my life right there with that phone call so I'd get a phone call from ryan and i was like all right book me the ticket i'm down we're going Next thing I know, I'm at like a venue. There's, there's a stage with like quarter pipes on the stage and like two five stairs with the handrails on them. And he's like, yeah, like, so someone's gonna be performing and you are just gonna like skate. I'm like, all right. By the end of the day, somebody's in the crowd and they're on a mic and then hear the voice. It's like, that voice sounds so familiar. And then that night, realized that it was Lil Wayne. Every time we speak, get proud, let's go. Get your wall book, open, cause we got every smoke so much, the smoking up there. Yeah, the little Wayne thing just fell into my lap. I knew Jeremy was available and that he would do it. And everyone loves him. 
So of course Wayne loved him. When Little Wayne took him onto on his tour, at first when he called, I was like, "Yeah, right." And then that went from me not knowing what I'm doing, almost potentially like ruining my life that Saturday, to being in Alabama, meeting Lil Wayne, and then going on a two and a half month tour, skating on stage with him every day while he performed, and going to a new skate park every night that he wanted to skate at. And that's when like, it started clicking to me like, damn, like I'm so happy I made this decision. I was like to the person behind me, that's my son. That's my son up there. And people are just looking at me like, okay, I get it, all right. You're proud of your kid. He flourished. He came back and he was like, even better skater, even stronger skater. And then by the time I got back to Florida, like my whole mindset was different on what I wanted to do, all because Clemens gave me that phone call. I think that uh, just like anything in the world, to be successful or whatever, it takes like consistency, persistence, over and over the same thing. Jeremy's doing that. He just needs that little break, and I feel like things are gonna take off for him in a really good way. He's just a late bloomer in skateboarding. It's all there, and it's ready to be like, boom. I mean, I feel like the first time that the industry started to take notice was, that we, it was a few years ago, I don't even remember the year, they all blur together, these Tampa Ams, but he got second one year. And you know, no one from Tampa's ever won, other than Josh Stewart winning the first one. But that year, it felt like the stars were aligning. People were coming up to him, you know, it just felt like there was some buzz about him. Throughout me going to all these competitions with the border, helped me get, I guess, like noticed, maybe by Rockstar. So that happened around the same time that Nick Matlin sent a text to one of my friends in Tampa while we were out street skating. And was trying to get a hold of me to see if I wanted to get Santa Cruz boards. Where I'm from, which I, I'm from Pasco County, which Pasco County, it's known for pills and getting in trouble, but skateboarding saved me from doing that. Skateboarding saves you. Skateboarding saves you, period. Right now we are in Tampa. When we talked to him in Santa Cruz, he was still in, still in jail. He ended up getting out. I've been back here for about a week and I haven't seen him yet. It's not nothing like out of the, out of the usual. He's kind of always been hard to track down once he's doing what he, doing what he does. I did talk to him this morning, told him that we're gonna be up in the area that I'm pretty sure he's in, and just try to link up with him, track him down. <laughs> It'd be cool. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to see my dad. Hey, what's up? Not much. You gonna be able to meet up or no? Or can we meet up with you somewhere? Yeah, I'll, I'll be, there's um, um, on Spring Hill Drive. Uh -huh. There's like a veteran, there's like a, a veteran's park right there. Wanna meet up there? All right. Yeah, I'll call you, I'll take you to the address, okay? All right, bye. All right, well, I love you. Love you too, bye. Right now we are going to go meet up with my dad. He just doesn't want anyone to know where he's at. As far as like what county he's in, what part of town he's in. I don't know, he says some shit happened down this <laughs> with some people and he just doesn't want anyone to know where he's at. Oh, 
my son! Oh, my son! Oh, I love you! I can't let anybody know I'm up here, man. I know. I already let them know. Uh, oh, I missed you, man. So what's going on? Oh, you got some more ink on your arm right there? Yeah, I got a whole new tattoo, look. Nice. That's sick. That's all with the gun, all my shit's like, all my shit's like soot and fucking What's pick, soot? soot, pick and put with the oil, oh. burn, burn a candle with the oil, use a staple. You think it hurts more than a normal tattoo? Uh, I don't know, yeah, I'll feel good. <clears throat> when he first started skating, actually, I built him a skateboard deck and I gave him a tube, a t like a tire tube, inner tube to hold in the middle of it and a little kick ramp and he hit that kick ramp and bam, like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I grew up, I, I water skied, barefooted, water skied, jumped, slalom, trick skied, wakeboarded and shit. So I got a, a boat and um, he got, got up some skis and shit and he got right up on it. And that was good times on a boat. Yeah, except when y'all just leave me out in the fucking lake with all them alligators. <laughs> I've always told him like, I don't care what you do, just have fun. Never get in trouble in school, graduated. Now like me, I, I start getting in trouble until I was older, so. You ain't start getting caught till you was older. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a different story. <laughs> I just got done doing like 13 months in jail here. Vegas, the only thing that was kind of crazy, Vegas was kind of, kind of crazy for us all. And I don't know, I think it comes to my mind is a bunch of girls naked in my bed every time I wake up in the morning. <laughs> what it is what it is, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I just remember like my very first memory is like being in your truck, like a Bronco or something. I'm super young, I'm like peeking over the, the dashboard but you had like got someone to pull oh, over. Oh, okay, yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah, short story. The situation went down, I had a little German with me, and I pulled a guy over and got yoked him out of his car and, you know, put a gun to his head and had him crying and shit. And he was sitting there staring and watching it. He shouldn't have been watching that kind of stuff, but it is what it is. You see me kick in hotel room doors, shit, remember that? Yeah. Kicking hotel room doors, hitting people, fucking taking shit and taking my, you know. He's lived a life, man. Lived a, lived a good, good round life. You know, I mean, as far as, that's probably why he doesn't get in trouble now, you know what I mean? But I can't wait to skate with you. When? <laughs> Boy, you're driving right now? You don't got no license. Who? You. You got a license? <laughs> yeah, I got one. It's called my license. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Range too much. What, uh, just on the way out, like, what are what are some of your kind of hopes for the future? I hope his health. I hope he's just, uh, healthy. You know what I mean? As long as he has his health, and as long as he's uh, has fun, I think everything else is going to come to him. You know. He's got a good head on his shoulders. He's a good, good kid. My, my best friend. I appreciate, appreciate you doing this. Good to see you, man. I'm happy to see you too. I didn't think I was going to see you. Uh, we got to shoot up to Grandma, your, your mom's house. Right. She got all the photos of me. Don't, don't let her know where I'm at. I won't. You saw you just saw nobody there. So, I don't need her to. Uh, I know. Love you. Love you too. Be safe. I will. All right. Really? Um, but yeah, since he got out a couple days later, I was told that he had a warrant for his arrest already. That's pretty easy to happen when you're on probation. They just want to put you right back in jail, so. He's in skateboarding. And some pros, sometimes you wish would go away. Right now we're in my front yard. Well, we're in my kitchen. In the yeah, and it's about to go down in the front yard. And there's, I don't know. Last time I looked out there, there's like 100 people maybe. And so the, the the plan at this point is is like part of the bro Tampa bro is like a legit pro and a bro, which is someone like me, 
is skates on the driveway at the same time for two minutes, like a contest, like a fun contest, you know? Tag teams. And so then you're gonna be like over the mic. Ryan Clements doesn't have a partner. Uh, Jeremy Nibs, you're gonna be Ryan's partner. Get ready to skate. Hey, Jeremy Nibs, are you out there? Go ahead. Nibs, where are you at? You skating? You're gonna skate with Ryan. Jeremy Nibs, I'm putting you in. Ryan has chosen you, so there's no backing out. And so we're gonna make Jeremy skate. We're gonna hold them off for last. Ryan Clements, Jeremy Nibs, the final team. You might Let's get it. If I recognize Clements from the internet, you might recognize Jeremy from the best clips to come out of San Francisco in the last five years. Guys, you might recognize that man bun. And then uh, we're gonna do the results and. Yeah, we'll go right into awards. Ryan and Jeremy are gonna win the contest. So, oh man, so the winners, man, give me this, give me these. The champions are Ryan Clements and Jeremy Nibs. Get on up here, Jeremy, where the hell are you at? Let's give it up for Jeremy. Wait a second, you're right, this isn't fair. Cause one of you guys is supposed to be pro. It's supposed to be a pro and a bro. Hey, can we do something about this, guys? Yo, what are we gonna do about this? Yeah! Yeah! That's fucking right! Surprise! Surprise! Jeremy Nibs, you are a pro! I call dibs, give me one of them boards. Hey, pass one of them boards this way. Yes! Jeremy Nibs! Tampa Pro! That's fucking right! I was screaming at my Uber driver. Dude, I was about to cry at my Uber I was stoked, man. Just thought it was a, I don't know, a no-brainer, really. Deserves it more than anybody, you know? Like, it's amazing. Yeah, I'm really, really hyped. I think he deserves the shit out of it. Everybody throw some beer in the air for my man Jeremy Dibs! Let me give you money, and I want a big closer thing that I can write. Will you just go to the I had a dream that his name was on the Santa Cruz board. <laughs> I had a dream that it was K-N-I-B-B-S in the Santa Cruz font across the board. He is the best skateboarder. He's my video game character, period. Okay. I think his skating's timeless. It's just something that you can see 20, 30 years down the road and just be like, oh, that is like great. That's, like, that's skating. There's nothing negative said about Jeremy, ever. You know, it's always positive. When people are see, they see him, they're like, oh, that dude's sick. Yeah. He's so sick, he's so rad, underrated. I don't know, I just got this thought, like, like if Jeremy was my son, I would be like really, really proud of him. Nowadays, what stands out, I mean, I just is, how humble he is about his skating. He always dumbs it down. That's something that does a little annoying to me. Cause I'm like, if I was as good as you, I would let the fucking world know it. It's like uh, it's uh, it's almost like he's dancing. Like uh, especially if you watch him skate a skate park, it's it's it, there's not it's nonstop. It's like he drops in and he goes, and then there's another part that's coming, and he goes with that, and it's you can tell it's not pre-planned. It's just kind of is what it is, and it's it's always been like that. You know, since he took his pads off and stopped skating vert as much and started s skating, it's like it feels to me like he's just uh, flowing around everywhere and going fast as hell. He is obviously crushing it, you know, so happy for him, proud of him. Now you have to do something you've never done, like skydive or something. Or win Tampa Pro. Oh my god. Wait, are you in the contest now? Oh yeah, I'm making signs.
shit, bro. Nibs is gonna be the shit. He's the best. Hello? Yo, what up? Hey, what's up? What are you doing? You look good. You looking good too. Is that a shirt from that box I sent you? Yeah, you like it? Mm-hmm. I broke a couple of them out. Got got keep them nice and crispy, hanging in the closet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Your yeah. hair's getting long. Yeah. Thinking back to that trip to Tampa, like overall, how was that how was that whole trip that we went on? Surprising. The beginning of it was a lot of up and down. Well, I flew there early because my great-grandmother passed away. And then ups and downs of like issues with my dad, things that he was going through, him having a, having a warrant, which led to him not being able to be there when I turned pro. He was like the one person that wasn't there that of course I wanted to be there. And I know he wanted to be there too, but it just didn't work out that way. Waves are kind of big, so think about getting like a long board. Yeah? Yeah. A long board surfboard? Yeah, a long board surfboard. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I don't need a long board skateboard. <laughs> I skate the German Nibs deck, Santa Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta put some grip tape on it. That's so. a trip, huh? Yeah, yeah. Proud of man. You be Proud telling people it's me or you be telling people it's you? It's your board. Either or. <laughs> <laughs> It depends on what she looks like. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding, man. I ain't got time for all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. How about, like, you know, just him not making it to the pro event? Was that a bummer? While it was happening, I didn't really think about it too much because I didn't know it was going to happen. As the come down started from, like, being so happy and everything, I was like, damn. Like, my dad wasn't there. Like, I'm, I, it's bumming me out. And I know, like, me also thinking about it, like, damn, I wonder how he feels, like, this thing that he's been, like, looking forward to for a long time since I started skating, and he just wasn't able to be there. I know that definitely affected him. So, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm feeling good. Did my little uh, jog, like, five miles today. Oh, so, yeah, you've been working out, like, every day. Every day. I found a gym right down the street from here, so... Literally just working out, everything. staying healthy. Part of his getting released and part of his probation was him going to a rehab. He's done it before and it's happened and the day he gets out of rehab, next day it's like just right back to the same, same stuff. But it was just way different this time. When he got out, he continued with doing all the meetings, which because of COVID, it's just been like a uh, like Zoom, Zoom call meetings. So now he's been about coming up to five months sober, I believe. He looks better, sounds better. We talk every day, which is something that I've like missed definitely. Cause I've experienced like these conversations with my dad and his like energy and excitement and just the way he is since I was like 12, 13. So to like finally have that, that person back, it's just like, that also motivates me. It makes me really happy. Yeah. Being Never sober too now. late. Never too late. Yeah, how's it feel? Feels good. Feels real good. Feels, uh, feel blessed, man. Feel, uh, it's never too late to turn your life around, you know? Goals for the future. Finish this video part. Try to have another video part come out within six months of this one coming out. Big goal, saving up, trying to buy my mom a house. I can't wait to come out there and see you. Just let me know when you want me to get the ticket. You just let me know, I'm here. Uh, everything going okay with you? You know I'm so good. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm not worried about you, though. Mm. You know I'm only five hours away on a flight, so if you need me, well, let me know. All right. Thanks for picking up. 
been doing right, this? Of course. Of course, man. I love you. I'm proud right. of you. I love you too. Proud of you too. Very pr- Thank you. I'll talk to you tonight. Alright. Alright. Bye. Alright. Bye. <laughs> That's the shit I've been waiting for. <laughs> I think with this whole like, I don't know if we call it a documentary or whatever we, whatever we call this on me and how I grew up. And I don't want anybody to think that it's like trying to get some like sympathy or something cause that's not it at all. I'm happy the way everything turned out and everything I went through because without that, like I don't know who I'd be. I know that there's some kids out there who are going through the same thing that I went through or who are gonna go through it. And I guess this whole thing for me is just to like, hopefully inspire some kid or make some kid like have hope that he could like get out of his situation. I'm filming a documentary on like where I grew up. So we're just gonna show a little clip of this house. Oh man, I'm Stan the Man. Stan the Man. Yes sir, one love. Stan the Man. Yeah, if you come to, come to Florida, you gotta come to Florida. What are you doing? This thing is crazy. important thing. Along with subscribing, make sure you hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the newest Santa Cruz videos as soon as they drop. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.